Is anybody going to Santa Town? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of country music in the truck this morning as we uh, head out, heading north out of Toronto. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Yukon Bob video. Good to have you with us again. Boy, it's been a while since I've been out. Almost probably 10 days. Winds have been blowing a lot over the last while. Finally, it looks like we've got a couple of uh, good days ahead of us. So going to capitalize on that and head out for another sea doo trip. Heading up to uh, a lake today called the Lake of Bays. I'm going to launch from a little town on the south end of that lake called Baysville and then uh, just kind of explore the lake, have uh, lunch probably in a little community on the lake called Dorset later on, but uh, we've got a couple hours to get up there. It's a solo ride today. The Sea-Doo Tours Riding Group is out on another ride today. I decided to do this one instead. So hang in there with us. We're going to be up there. It's a little bit further from me in about two hours time from now, and we'll head out on the lake and uh, go explore the Lake of Bays. Thanks for coming along. Well, we are here in Baysville, just a couple hours uh, from home. Everything made it okay. I've been here once before. It was a couple of years ago, and it was with the Sea-Doo Tours riding group. So this is the first time solo out on uh, Lake of Bays. Let's just take a quick walk down to the ramp and have a look. It's been uh, a while since I've been here and I've kind of forgotten what the ramp looks like. So let's just have a look. This is a free ramp, I think, by the way, and the parking is also free here, so that's a great thing. Yeah, this looks like a really good ramp. Nice and wide, concrete pad all the way down into the water. Let's just have a quick look before we back up. Yeah, that's a good ramp. Let's just make sure there's no big drop off off the end of that concrete. Should be okay, but we just want to take a look. Yeah, look at that. The concrete goes right down into the water. That will be nice and easy, no problem there. Okay, so let's go back, get the sea dew, back it in and uh, get things unhooked and get into the water. Oh, just noticed this. Look at the uh, license plate on the front of the truck. It used to say Yukon Bob, but all the blue lettering in the last week has kind of peeled off. A couple of power washings did not help that situation. I'll have to see if I can get a new plate. All right, we'll get the cover off and get everything out of the back. Get the sea loaded up. Let's get these off the back, hook them down here. That's off. And plugs are in, plugs are in, that's secure. I don't know if I'll take that back seat with me today or not. I think I'll take the back seat off because I don't really need it. Give me a little more room on the back of the platform there and just leave the back seat in, uh, in the vehicle. All right, it's taken a couple hours to get up here, a little bit to unload, but we are now on the water. It is uh, 10.30 in the morning, so that's not too bad. The lake looks to be fairly calm, at least for now. I think we're expecting winds of about 12, 11, 13 kilometers per hour today. So that's, that's all fine and dandy. That'll work out nice. And it's supposed to be that way pretty much all day long. So the plan is for today to just go out and explore, explore around Lake of Bays. I think I'll just basically circumnavigate the entire lake, finding myself somewhere around noon, one o'clock, over at uh, Dorset, a town on the lake, and have lunch there. So I think everything is pretty much secure. We've got the back seat off. We've got a little extra room. Everything is uh, tied down and tight. I think we're good to go. Let's go. I can see why they call it uh, Lake of Bays because there's just all these little bays that come off uh, the main body of water one after another and just sort of dip back for a little bit and then there's cottages all the way around them. So thus the name, Lake of Bays. Look at all this lovely rock, all that pink granite. 
I've seen some dive platforms, but that's one of the taller ones I've seen. Water must be deep off the end of that thing. It's even got a light hooked up underneath it. That is quite the dive platform. Wow. Oh, here's another bay off a of bay. Yeah, let's just take a little trip back in here and have a look. You can tell by that flag there that uh, we've got a little bit of wind, but not all that strong. Probably 11, 12 kilometers an hour. I got to get a picture of this. Look at the size of that floating loon there. Swan, not a loon. Wow. I called it a loon, but I guess it's a swan. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Is that a lot of fun, kids? Yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> Gotta have all the toys out on the water. Looks like they're just getting ready to head out for a little boat ride themselves today. Pine trees all along the shoreline. Speaking of nice boathouses, wow, isn't that nice? Look at the look at the the walkway to get down to it. Oh, another one of those floating uh, tubes. This one's a unicorn. Must be a thing on this lake. It is shallow here, though. Probably 0.5 meters. That's shallow. Let's make our way out of this way a bit. Some of the bays are a little bit deeper, but this one's pretty shallow. Wow, look at this. Here's actually a section of the lake where there are no cottages side by side. Maybe it's because it's hilly in the background. I don't know. This whole area here, all the way from that point, all the way around over here, no cottages. Wonder why. No road back in there? You think they would have developed one? It's gotta be some kind of reason because there's cottages pretty much everywhere else around the lake. Maybe not quite as thickly populated as some of the, the Muskoka lakes, but, uh, or Lake Muskoka, but still, that's a pretty wide, big, open area. You may have been noticing in the video shots that there's a new addition to the Sea-Doo. I've installed a GPS unit onto the Sea-Doo. The folks at uh, my dealership at Uxbridge uh, Motorsports Marine put that on just a few days ago. It's only been on there about three or four days. There's a bracket that mounts right into the right-hand side mirror that's uh, made by Sea-Doo. You take the mirror off and you mount the bracket in there. This is uh, the latest version of the Garmin Ecomap. I think it's called the 72 CV. They also make an SV, which has got, the S stands for the sonar. This does not have sonar. It's basically just a navigation um, GPS with um, different settings for distance and speed and all that sort of stuff. But I'm just kind of playing with it for the first time today. And you can, you can move things around on it, the screens around. You've got a compass heading. There's my boat there. It's not as detailed though as Navionics, unless Unless I'm missing something here that I haven't figured out yet that I can download, download maybe more detailed maps. It comes preloaded with North American maps for Canada and the United States, but they're not as detailed in terms of uh, the texture and terrain that you get with Navionics. Navionics gives you a nice kind of contours and you can, well, it's got to load a little bit. The, the color scales are different. 
This seems fairly basic. Now, I may have to download some additional maps for this, for this particular area to give me a lot more detail. Premium maps or something like that that you may have to pay for. I just, I don't know yet. I gotta figure it out. The uh, GPS unit is new to me. I haven't totally got it figured out, but thanks to the guys at Uxbridge uh, uh, Motorsports Marine, they got this thing installed for me in 24 hours and turned around really quickly. Basically, you run a power cord that comes in the kit for this, and you have to remove the front uh, flange off of there, or the cowling a little bit, and then there's a Y connector. There's a power line under there, so you just have to tap into that with a Y connector to that existing power line under there, and uh, the power is then supplied to the GPS unit. So it's about eh, $1,400 Canadian with the Sea-Doo mounting bracket, but the bracket is really nice. You can unscrew it left and right and just pop it right out of there if you want. Still getting used to it. I don't, uh, I don't have this down by any means yet. I'm gonna have to play with it for a little bit. I'm also gonna have to check out whether or not there's more detailed maps, because the map is okay on there, but I would like to see more detail in it. Have to play with it a bit and just figure it out. But uh, nice to have it on there. The screen is fantastic, nice and big. You know, I was using the BRP Connect app and trying to read that screen down there. Ah, I didn't really like that all that much. It's hard to see, it's a small screen. This is a big screen. It's got the water guard on the back of it here and uh, just a lot easier to see and read. And with the touch screen, you can move it around with your finger, which is kind of nice. We'll have to play with it and get to use it, learn how to use it a little bit more. Very nice. Ah, uh, what you can't do with money, eh? What money can't buy? Look at all the toys in there. Three boats, a couple of sea -Doos. time I was out here I didn't get back and explore all these bays. I was riding with the Sea Dew Tours riding group and they were kind of bombing along a little quick for my liking so this time I have more of an opportunity to just poke around, poke in and out of the bays. You can tell it's August. That water is just like bath water. Super warm, really nice. No problem swimming in this. I don't know why, but that seems to be a thing on the Lake of Bays. I haven't noticed that a lot on some of the other lakes in the region, but here, every second bay you go into, it's got one of those things. Maybe it's a requirement. Just kind of thinking this might not be a bad spot because the winds are fairly light right now to put the drone up in the air and see if I can get some aerials of this lake and of the sea dew going along the water on Lake Abase. Yeah, I think we'll give it a shot.
So what I did is I flew it, I launched it from the sea dew, but then I pulled into a shallow bay right in here where there's nice and sand and I just kind of got off the sea dew because I wanted to be able to maneuver around if I had to when it was coming down to land and then just kind of air caught it out of the air when it came down. So that seemed to work pretty good. A little nerve wracking though. That's uh, only the second time I've flown the Skydio. The first time was a crash and then Skydio was pretty good about it. They returned it and this is the second time I've had it in the air and we'll use some of the footage from that. It, it, it kind of is an easier drone to fly in some ways once you've got it up in the air, but just still nervous about all of this. So I'm catching it from the ground and not off the sea -Doo. Maybe eventually I'll get to retrieving it from the sea -Doo, but uh, not yet. This bit of land in front of me is, uh, is actually an island. It's called Big Win Island. And this is probably the most prominent thing on Big Win Island. This is uh, something that was built in the 1920s. And uh, way back then, the roads were just opening up, automobile traffic was just opening up, and this was built in the 1920s by a guy by the name of Charles Orlando Shaw, and uh, he operated it for many years. It closed, I think, for a while in the 1960s, it was up for auction. Looks like somebody has, uh, over those years, picked it up and put it back into, back into service. When it was built in the 1920s, this was... Uh, a real departure from other cottages and resorts around uh, the Skoka area because this was made out of concrete. Just about everything else was built out of wood, but the owner wanted to build this out of concrete. He was deathly afraid of fire and of it burning down. Well, since the 1920s, that has not happened. It has not burned down. And uh, it was kind of built in an era that celebrated grandeur and Big One was a monument to, to that age. It's still in operation here today. On this island, Big One Island, there's just a huge golf course on this island. If you look at it from an aerial view, the golf courses, the fairways take up most of the island. But this is the big attraction. There's a marina right here, and it's uh, the Big One Resort. Okay, we have arrived at uh, the town of Dorset on Lake of Aves. I think this is the place where I'm gonna have lunch. They've actually got sea -Doo rentals here. Just over there, you can rent sea -Doo's here. And look at this classic old boat. This is uh, something that I think that they run tours out on the lake with. You can get on that boat and head out on the lake, take a little tour around. Oddly enough, it's called the Big Wind, named after that island. So this is Dorset, and uh, I think the place to tie up where I tied up last time is right along that wall there. And then you walk across this bridge right up here. And just on the other side of the bridge, I'll take you up and show you, is the restaurant right down along the water there. There's the restaurant right there. Looks fairly busy. You see, that's the problem. The sea dew wants to go underneath. It's already underneath. Nah, not really liking that today. Gotta be something better. They just don't make these docks for sea dews. Well, that's the first time off that sea doing in about four hours. <laughs> Feels good to stretch your legs a little bit. Okay, we'll take this stuff. We'll go to that restaurant right over there, but we'll have to go across that bridge over there and then down over to the restaurant. This is the town of Dorset, if I haven't mentioned that already. The last time I was here, there was a bunch of kids here and they were jumping off the bridge here, right down into the water. 
I had the drone with me as well last time, and I got some video of that. Got a table outside, lots of room. The sea do is right across the way, so I can keep an eye on that. And I think it's time for a cool beverage and maybe some fish and chips. Let me just show you where the sea do is. It's just across the way. There's a little pagoda here, and then the sea do is straight across on the other side. Here comes the best part. Thank you. What's that called again? Sparkhouse Red. Sparkhouse Red. Okay. That's a local brewery right here in uh, Lake of Bays. Let's try it out. It's like a Rickards Red. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's got a little bite to it afterwards. One big piece of haddock, some fries, a little bit of coleslaw, and that is the, uh, the fish and chips. Looks good. It's just a quaint little town. I always kind of like this town, I don't know. It just has a nice feel to it. And it looks like the wind is picking up just a little bit. Those flags are blowing a little more than when I came in here. We'll load up here and head on out. <clears throat> and this dock system here was better than what I was looking at earlier. At least the sea you know, wasn't rubbing that board down there. Doesn't let the back end go underneath like it did on the other one, which is no good, because once the back end of the sea gets underneath the dock, then it's just rubbing back and forth and uh, you're gonna scratch the hell out of it. You need a dock that has platforms on the side that go down to at least the water level to keep the sea from sliding underneath it. So this machine and I are starting to get to know each other just a little bit better. I'm starting to trust it a little bit more. I've got about uh, 16, 17 hours on it now. And uh, so far it's performed uh, flawlessly for me. It's really run nicely. I do sense a little bit of cavitation when I first start to take off with it, when I first give it a little bit of throttle. It's just a little rumble there that I don't remember on the, the previous sea -Doo, so I don't know what that's about. It doesn't seem to be a problem, but it just feels slightly weird. Anyway, I just had an oil change done on it uh, at JetX. Uh, uh, Ryan Daly and uh, Phil there did an oil change for me just a little while ago. BRP says you don't have to do your first oil change until about 50 hours, but you know what? It's a brand new engine, and uh, it's the first time it's been run. Could be little bits of metal shavings, not shavings, but you know, little bits of fine metal into the oil, that sort of thing, from the, the running of a brand new engine. So I've changed it out. And when I changed it out, I did a little comparison, a side-by-side, -side of uh, what the oil looked like at 15 hours compared to brand new oil. So let me just show you that now, so you can make a little comparison yourself as to what oil looks like. Okay, so we've added a bit of clean oil on the right, and the oil that's in the machine on the left. So that's 14, 15 hours, folks, and that's the difference between the two. That's fairly clear, and you can see that that's already getting a little bit dirty after just 14 hours. So not a bad idea to, to change the oil out. JetX, uh, the guys there, the techs, they recommend changing oil every 25, 30 hours. And I don't change it that often, but in the very beginning, I decided I would do an oil change quite early on. So I've had one oil change already, and I'll do another one at about uh, 45, 50 hours, another 30 hours, an hour or so. So about 15 hours on it right now. But yeah, it's uh, probably a good idea. These are pretty expensive machines. They're high performance engines, and uh, they run at pretty high RPM when you're moving at speed. So probably not a bad idea to keep the oil maintained as best you can. I am just about back to where I launched from. It's just up around the corner. And I think at this point, we are gonna say goodbye. We're gonna say that is another Yukon Bob video. Kind of a full day on the water today. Pretty much circumnavigated this entire Lake of Bays uh, with lunch at Dorset and a visit to the little area of Dwight on the lake. So it's been a pretty full day, probably six hours on the lake. Machine ran great, had a really nice time out here on the lake today. Fairly calm, got a little bit choppy on the way back, but nothing too serious. So let's call it a day. It was a little bit of an expensive day because I did lose the Mavic Air 2S on this trip today. And I do not think I've got insurance covering that drone. So I think that one's a, that's a goner. That's kind of unfortunate. It happens. 
Air 2S Skydio flew it a couple of times today. It did not too bad, but uh, it doesn't, uh, with the controller, it doesn't respond like the DJI drones does. Its plus side is that when it's flying autonomously and you're just using the beacon and moving it around the drone, it does a pretty good job at that, and uh, I kind of was impressed at how it did that. But when I tried to fly it using the uh, the actual controller, eh, not as good as DJI. So there's trade-offs, plus and minus for that one. Thanks, guys, for coming along. Hope you enjoyed this video on uh, the Lake of Bays. We'll see you shortly out on the water somewhere on the next Yukon Bob video. Till then, uh, take care, and if you've got any comments, please feel free to leave them below. I read all of them. See you later. Bye for now.